Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Zenotes Live. Today we'll be going over mass spectrometry of AS chemistry with Fahad. So Fahad, do you want to introduce yourself briefly before we get started? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Fahad Ansari and uh, I teach A-level chemistry here in Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, I've been doing so for the past couple of years and uh, um, in today's topic, I just wanted to go over um, one of the newer topics that have been added to the uh, Cambridge uh, AS chemistry syllabus, which is mass spectrometry. So shall we get into it? Yeah. All right. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. All right. So let's get started on mass spectrometry. And uh, of course, we will begin with a deep dive into the concepts before we uh, do some uh, past paper practice, and then we will wrap up the show. All right, so mass spectrometry basically is an analytical technique. Um, and uh, one of the major uses of this technique is to find um, the relative atomic mass of an element right, using relative isotopic masses and their percent abundance values, right? And the graph that we use for this is called a mass spectrum. And basically what happens in this is that there's a vaporized sample of the element that is bombarded by electrons. It causes an electron to be lost from each atom or molecule or fragment, and it creates ions with a one positive charge, right? So then we get a mass spectrum, which is basically a graph that shows on the x-axis, we have the mass to charge ratio, right? And the mass to charge ratio is basically the mass of that uh, atom or molecule or fragment divided by the charge of that particular um, species, right? And because the charge of each species is uh, pretty much positive one. So the mass to charge ratio can be simplified to just the mass of that particular species, right? And on the y-axis of this mass spectrum, we have percent abundance, right? The percent abundance or relative abundance basically just means that what is the percentage of uh, the atoms or molecules or fragments that belongs to a certain species, right? So I'm going to look at a simple example of this, uh, you know, just to show you what a mass spectrum looks like. So over here, we have a mass spectrum of an unknown element X, all right? And over here, you could see the percent abundance on the Y axis, the mass to charge ratio on the X axis, right? And uh, basically, this element X has three isotopes. Isotopes are um, basically atoms of the same element with different mass numbers, right? And remember that because mass to charge ratio is basically the same as the mass because the charge is just plus one. So we're just going to be using these values as the mass numbers of the three isotopes of element X, right? So to calculate the relative atomic mass of this particular element, we're going to be using these three isotopes mass numbers, 112, 114, and 115 to get to this. So we're going to use this formula, right? So the AR or relative atomic mass, basically what you're going to do is you're going to multiply the percent abundance of each isotope by its mass to charge ratio. You're going to do this for all the isotopes, and then you're going to add them up. This symbol over here, the sigma, basically means summation, or in other words, you need to add whatever is in the brackets, right? And then you divide this by the sum of all the percent abundances, right? So the calculation for this particular question is over here. So what you've done is you've multiplied 3% by 112 over here. And then you have done the same thing for the next isotope, which is 56 times 114 and then 41 times 115, you've done it over here for the second isotope and over here for the third. And you have added up all these products. Once you did that, 
you divided by the sum of the percent abundances, three plus 56 plus 41, which happens to be 100. But uh, normally uh, when I teach this topic, I don't write uh, you know, 100 in the denominator for this formula. I write the sum of percent abundances because uh, some questions come up where the percent abundances do not add up to 100 because uh, sometimes in a mass spectrum, you can have uh, peaks. These uh, guys over here, these long bars, and these are called peaks. These peaks over here may not belong to the same element all the time, right? And so that's why the percent abundances may not add up to 100 for the peaks belonging to the isotopes of the one element for which we want to find the AR, right? Once we've done all this calculation, you get 114.35, right? So this is one of the uses of mass spectrometry to find the AR of an element. Next, mass spectrometry can also be used to deduce the structure of an organic molecule, right? And uh, basically you have uh, particular peaks in a mass spectrum of an organic molecule. Uh, the first and most important uh, peak is the molecular ion peak. This basically occurs um, at a mass to charge ratio, which is pretty much equal to the relative molecular mass of that molecule. It's basically the entire molecule, which has been converted into a one plus ion, right? And that results in a molecular ion peak, right? And there can be peaks at smaller mass to charge ratio values, which are the result of molecular fragments. So basically you break up the molecule into different fragments by breaking certain bonds. Um, normally the bonds that are broken are single bonds like carbon-carbon single bonds, carbon-hydrogen, carbon-oxygen, carbon-nitrogen, right? And once you break these single bonds, whatever is left can be converted into a plus one ion and that will give you a molecular fragment that results in a peak, right? So over here, we have the mass spectrum of uh, ethanol, this particular molecule. Now its MR is 46, right? And over here, you can notice that at a mass to charge ratio value of 46 over here, you have this guy over here, which is the molecular ion peak, right? So basically what you've done is, you've taken the entire CH3, CH2OH, the ethanol molecule, and given it a positive charge. That's it, right? And uh, there are other uh, peaks over here as well that are noteworthy, such as this peak over here, which is called the base ion peak. Now the base ion peak is not really that important uh, as far as the Cambridge AS syllabus is concerned, uh, but uh, the base ion peak is just the peak with the highest relative abundance, right? And for ethanol, it so happens that it is the CH2OH fragment with a positive charge that results in this particular peak with the highest abundance, right? Uh, we've already discussed the molecular ion peak and we have other peaks as well over here with fragments, right? So for example, over here, we have this CH3 positive. So if I look at the structure again, I have CH3, CH2OH, if I break this particular carbon, carbon, single bond between this carbon and this carbon, that will result in this particular fragment with a mass to charge ratio of 15, right? And uh, we have another fragment over here, C2H5 positive with a mass to charge ratio of 29, right? So basically if I draw the structure again over here, I have CH3, CH2OH, and if I break this particular bond between this carbon and this oxygen, I will get this fragment over here. With a positive charge, it'll give me this particular peak, right? So you can have a lot of fragments, right? And uh, um, you're never going to get a question that asks for, um, you know, the whole list of fragments that are possible, but uh, we will see in the uh, questions later that we're going to do that um, they may give you a mass charge ratio value, and they give you the uh, structure of the entire molecule, and they ask you that, what part of this molecule can give you a fragment with the given mass to charge value? Right, 
Now, one very important but very small peak, you probably don't notice it, but over here you may notice that there's a very tiny peak over here, right? At a mass to charge ratio of 47. Now, this is basically the uh, MR of the molecule plus one, right? So 46 plus one gives us 47. There's a very tiny peak over here, right? And this is called the M plus one peak, right? So we call this particular peak the M plus one peak, this term over here. And the reason why we have an M plus one peak is because uh, the M peak assumed that all the carbon atoms were carbon 12, right? So, I mean, if I calculate this MR over here, which is 46, I have two carbon atoms, so that's two times 12, plus I have six hydrogen atoms, plus one oxygen atom, right? Over here, I assume that the carbon atoms were carbon 12. Both of them were carbon 12. But if one of them happens to be carbon 13, which is a much rarer isotope of carbon, then the mass to charge ratio will increase by one. Right? So from 46, we will go to 47, right? Now this very tiny peak over here is very important actually. For small molecules with very few carbon atoms, right? We can actually use these two peaks, the M peak and the M plus one peak to find the number of carbon atoms in our organic compound. So for this, we have this particular formula N over here is the number of carbon atoms, right? 100 over 1.1 times height of the M plus one peak. This is that very tiny peak that you saw uh, towards the end of the mass spectrum and the height of the M peak in the denominator. This is the M peak, the molecular ion peak that we saw earlier, right? Now this 100 over 1.1, now, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, where this came from, right? This is, uh, the proof of this is uh, basically more rooted in statistics, right? More complex statistics than I bother to go into. So, you know, just remember that 1.1% of all carbon atoms are carbon-13 atoms, right? So that's basically the rough... Um, you could say logic, the incomplete logic for why we have 100 over 1.1 over here, but you're not really going to be asked about this logic. You just need to remember this formula and know how to apply it, right? And a right. small example of how we could do this. Okay, you have a question? All right, so moving on. We have the heights of uh, two peaks given over here, the M peak and the M plus one, right? They're given as 90 and two. So if we plug these into the formula, N equals 100 over 1.1 times two over here is the height of the M plus one peak. And the height of the M peak over here is given as 90. And so this turns out to be 2.02, .02, which is roughly two carbon atoms in the particular organic molecule, right? Now this formula, remember, it only works for organic molecules uh, that have uh, three or less carbon atoms. But uh, in past paper questions, um, this kind of question can go up to five or six carbon atoms as well. So don't, don't be alarmed, right? This uh, is just a rough, idea of the number of carbon atoms. It's not an exact formula, right? Uh, but this is good enough for AS chemistry purposes. Right. For the um, ethanol, since there are like um, a chance that one of the carbons could be carbon 13, mm -hmm. then would there also be like a chance where both carbons might be carbon 13s? Yes, that is uh, perfectly possible. That is perfectly possible. We can have, uh, let me just go that. Over here, so over here, I've only shown it till the M plus one peak. Now, further to the right, we could have a M plus two peak over here at a mass to charge ratio of 48. This could be an M plus two peak. 
where both the carbon atoms are carbon-13, but because uh, the chance of a carbon atom being carbon-13 isotope is only 1.1%, so the height of this particular peak is so small, it's barely noticeable, right? Right. And to be honest, when we want to find a rough idea of the number of carbon atoms in an organic molecule, uh, the formula only needs you to use the M plus one peak and the M peak, their relative abundances or the heights of those particular peaks, right? You don't need to use the M plus two peak for this one. Right, yep. All right, okay, next. Now, an M plus two peak can actually occur uh, more visibly if we have an organic molecule that contains a chlorine atom or a bromine atom, right? So you guys have studied halogenoalkanes, right? They contain a halogen atom bonded to an alkyl group, right? So yep. in organic molecules containing a chlorine atom, apart from the M peak and the M plus one peak that we've already seen, there's also the M plus two peak, right? where the mass to charge ratio is basically the MR plus two, right? And this is because of the two isotopes of chlorine, which are chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, right? So it's the chlorine 37 isotope, the heavier isotope that will cause the peak at the greater mass to charge ratio, which causes the M plus two peak, right? Since it's two units heavier than the chlorine 35 isotope, right? Now, we know that the chlorine 35 isotope has an abundance of 75%. For the chlorine 37 isotope, it is 25%. And that is why the ratio of the heights of the M peak caused by chlorine 35 and the M plus two peak caused by chlorine 37 is basically going to be three ratio one, right? So if I compare the heights, this is going to have is 75% abundance thanks to chlorine 35. This is going to have an abundance of 25% thanks to chlorine 37. So when I take the ratio, this turns out to be three ratio one, right? So the two peaks over here, if you have an N peak and an N plus two peak, and the ratio of their heights is roughly three ratio one, that means you have one chlorine atom present in your organic molecule, right? Right, yep. For example, over here, we have chloromethane CH3Cl, right? The M peak over here is at a mass to charge ratio of 50. Now this is calculated by adding up the carbon and the three hydrogens, so 12 plus three plus 35. Now normally when you use the AR of chloride, it's 35.5, right? But over here, you need to choose between the two isotopes, right? You need to choose which isotope you're going to use to calculate the mass to charge ratio. And over here, since this is the M peak, you're going to use the lighter isotope of chlorine, which is chlorine 35, right? And then for the M plus two peak, you're going to have an M by E or mass to charge ratio of 52 because over here you're using the chlorine 37 isotope. In the previous one, you had chlorine 35. Right? So if you add up the carbon, which is 12 plus three for the three hydrogens plus 37, now you choose the heavier isotope, right? Because of the M plus two peak, right? So the ratio of the heights of these peaks, if you can see from over here, the height of the um, M peak is 100. The height of the uh, M plus two peak over here, if I go all the way to the X axis, it is pretty much 33, right? So if you have 100 ratio 33.3, .3, this turns out to be three ratio one, right? And over here, the peak at 15 is just for good measure. This is because of the CH3 part of CH3Cl. So this fragment with a plus charge gives us this particular peak over here, right? Now, for bromine, we have two isotopes again, which are bromine 79 and bromine 81. So again, we will have two peaks, M peak and an M plus two peak, 
right? And because both of these isotopes have a 50% abundance, they both are equally abundant at 50%. So the ratio of the heights will be one ratio one, right? So for example, we have this particular um, mass spectrum of bromomethane, which is CH3Br. So over here, you can see that the F peak occurs at 94. And this is because you have CH3Br and the Br over here is going to be 79, bromine 79. So if I add up the um, masses of the atoms, so 12 for the carbon plus three for the hydrogen plus 79 for bromine 79, the lighter isotope will give you the M peak, right? And the heavier isotope, bromine 81, is going to give you the M plus two peak, which has a mass to charge ratio of 96. So mass to charge ratio is normally symbolized as M slash E. Over here, it's M slash Z, right? So both of them work, yep. right? So this is because over here, 96 is the sum of 12, 3, and 81, right? So over here, we have other fragments as well. Like, for example, we have 15. This is, again, because of the CH3, right? So what you did is this carbon bromine single bond is going to break at this part gets a positive charge. And so this is going to give you this particular fragment and a peak at a mass to charge ratio and by Z value of 15. And these peaks over here, these peaks over here. Now, Ethan, small yep. question for you. What do you think? What uh, particular atoms or fragments could be causing these particular peaks over here at 79 and 81? Um, just the different isotopes. The isotopes of which atom? Um, <clears throat> bromine. Right. So these are peaks because of the two isotopes of bromine. Now, when you broke the carbon bromine single bond, obviously you don't just have CH3 left, you have bromine as well. So it's the bromine atom. It's two isotopes of 79 and 81 with a positive charge, obviously that are going to give you these particular peaks. And you can notice that their heights are also in a one-to-one -one ratio because they are both equally abundant at 50% each. Right. So, so far we have seen that if you have one chlorine atom in an organic molecule, you have an M peak and an M plus two peak, and the heights are in the ratio of three ratio one. If you have a bromine atom in an organic molecule, you have an M peak and an M plus two peak at a ratio of one ratio one, the ratio of their heights. Now, what if you have two chlorine atoms or two bromine atoms or one atom of each of these two elements? You're also going to have a third peak, which is M plus four, right? Oh, now, okay, yep. Yeah, this, this, is, this is as far as we're going to go. Don't worry. Okay. So, this is dichloromethane. I'm going to do this example over here. Dichloromethane is CH2Cl2, right? So we have an M peak over here when both the chlorine atoms are chlorine 35, right? The M plus 2 peak will result when one of the two chlorine atoms is chlorine 35 and the other is chlorine 37. And you have an M plus four peak when both the chlorine atoms are of the heavier chlorine 37 isotope, right? So we have three peaks over here, three molecular ion peaks, M, M plus two, M plus four, right? Now, the ratio of the heights of these three peaks, now uh, the working is not exactly that important, but it's still, uh, a good idea to um, know how the ratio comes about. And uh, this will actually involve a bit of probability calculation. So um, if you have studied probability, good for you. If not, I'm going to try to make this as easy as I can, okay? So here we go. So for the M peak, 
we know that we, both the isotopes are going to be of chlorine 35. Both the chlorine atoms are going to be of the chlorine 35 isotope, right? So basically, yep. it, uh, in other words, we're trying to find the probability of one atom being chlorine 35 and the other atom also being chlorine 35, right? Now, the probability of chlorine 35 is basically 3 over 4 because we know that 75% is its abundance, right? Mm -hmm. And same goes for this guy, 3 over 4. And whenever we have an and coming up in a probability statement, that means we multiply probabilities of the individual events. So over here, I have multiplied 0 0.75 times 0 0.75. That gives me 9 divided by 16. That's the probability of both chlorine atoms being of the chlorine 35 isotope. Now, for the n plus 2 peak, now the n plus 2 peak is going to be a little more difficult to calculate. But the reason is that uh, we have two possibilities over here, right? Yep. So over here, basically, we have, um, you know, we basically want to find the probability of the first chlorine atom being chlorine 35 and the second chlorine atom being chlorine 37. So this is the first case. This is the first case. First chlorine is 35, second chlorine is 37, right? But you can also switch them around. That's your second possibility, that the first chlorine is actually 37 or this is basically our statement, first chlorine atom being 37 and the second atom being 35, right? Of the chlorine 35 isotope. So now what we're going to do is for the first statement, we have mm -hmm. this probability over here, 0 0.75 times 0 0.25. This is for chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, right? And means you multiply, right? Yep. And for the second statement, you have 0 0.25 times 0 0.75. So 0 0.25 mm -hmm. over here is for chlorine 37 times, this is for and, second atom being chlorine 35. So you multiply 0 0.75. And then there's this big green or in the middle. And uh, basically you're going to multiply, you're going to add these two products together, right? And that's right, going to give yep. you six over 16. So this is the probability of having one chlorine atom of one isotope and the other of the other isotope, right? So this is for the n plus two peak. For n plus four, it's going to be much simpler. So you just need to find the probability of the first and the second, both of them to be chlorine 37 isotope, right? Both atoms of the chlorine 37 isotope. And we know that the probability for chlorine 37 is one divided by four or 0 0.25. And same goes for this. So all you need to do is multiply because this and came up, right? Yep. So you multiply these over here, 0 0.25 times 0 0.25, you get one over 16. Now, now that you have all three of these probabilities, nine over 16, 6 over 16 and 1 over 16. When I put these together to find the ratio, it's going to be 9 ratio 6 ratio 1, right? You cancel out the 16s in the denominator, right? So 9 ratio 6 ratio 1. So in other words, if you have three peaks, three molecular ion peaks, M, M plus 2, and M plus 4, and the height ratio for all three peaks is nine ratio six ratio one, then you know that you have two chlorine atoms, right? So this is basically the whole summary of all this calculation that we've done over here. Um, we're going to do this again for the bromine, right? For two bromine atoms, but that's as far as we're going to go, okay? okay. So in dibromomethane, so basically, all I've done is instead of CH2Cl2, I have CH2Br2 now, right? There are three molecular ion peaks as well. Obviously, there's M peak when both bromines are bromine 79. Mm. You have M plus 2 when one of them is bromine 79 and the other is bromine 81. And finally, you have M plus 4 when both bromines 
what both bromine atoms are of the bromine 81 isotope. So onto the probabilities for M, it's going to be probability of um, bromine 79 and bromine 79. So both atoms need to be of the lighter isotope. And we know that because both bromine isotopes are of an equal um, abundance, right? They're of an equal abundance of 0.5. So the probability of this is going to be 0 0.5, and so is this. So you just multiply 0 0.5 with 0 0.5. The multiplication comes because of the and, right? Yep. And so we have 1 over 4, which is the probability of both bromine atoms being of the 79 isotope. For M plus 2, again, calculation is similar to what we did for chlorine. So this is going to be probability of the first atom being of bromine 79 and the second atom being bromine 81 or the first atom being 81 and the second bromine atom being 79. So this is going to be this calculation over here. So for this particular first statement over here before the or, it's going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 and for the statement after the OR, it's also going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 because both isotopes are equally abundant. And you have the plus because of the OR, right? And you get 2 divided by 4, which is basically 1 over 2. But I'm keeping this 2 over 4 for later, right? For M plus 4, um, similar to M, right? This is basically 4. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 because we're finding the probability of both atoms, the first and the second, being bromine 81, right? So for bromine 81, this is 0 0.5, the probability, and same case for the second bromine atom, that will also have the probability of 0 0.5. The and means you multiply the two and you get 1 over 4. So you have the three probabilities. For the M, you have one over four. For the M plus two, that's two over four. And for M plus four, you have one over four again. So when I simplify, I get one ratio two, ratio one, by canceling out the fours in the denominators, right? So in summary, if you have three peaks, three molecular ion peaks, M, M plus two, and M plus four, all of them have a height ratio of 9, ratio 6, ratio 1. That means you have two chlorine atoms present in your organic molecule. If you have three peaks, M, M plus 2, M plus 4, and their height ratio is not 9 to 6 to 1, but 1, ratio 2, ratio 1, that means instead of two chlorine atoms, you have two bromine atoms present, right? So right, yeah. these height ratios, you need to remember these, and you need to... Uh, remember how you came up with these ratios using these simple probability calculations, right? So yep. this is pretty much all for the deep dive. Ready for the workout? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I have picked past paper questions um, that are relevant to these topics, um, you know, so that we could go through all types of questions that you might come across, right? So over here, we have a mass spectrum of uh, magnesium shown over here, right? And uh, I skipped part one over here, this question, because part two involves the calculation. The values in part one that this is referring to here is basically the, uh, the percent abundancies of the isotopes of magnesium, right? So Ethan, could you tell me how many isotopes of magnesium do we see in this spectrum? Uh, there are three peaks, so... Right. So there are three, three. isotopes, right? Yep. So 24, 25, and 26. Now, if I read this graph, I can get the percent abundances, right? So yep. over here, from between 0 and 50, I can count. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divisions, right? So each yep. division is basically 10%, right? So if I go beyond 50, this is 60, this is 70, this is 80, right? 
So this is between 70 and 80, right? And uh, despite the fact that this uh, graph grid is not really that um, precise, but we can roughly say that this is 78%, right? For the second isotope, this is obvious, this is going to be 10%. Mm -hmm. And for this next one, this is just above 10%, so I'm going to go with 12, right? I need to make sure that these percent abundances do add up to 100 because this is a spectrum only of one element, which is magnesium, right? 78 right. plus 10 plus 12 is 100, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the formula for AR, right? I'm going to multiply the isotopic mass or the mass to charge ratio, the M by E value, 24 by 78. So this is going to be 24 times 78. Then I have 25, the mass to charge ratio of the next isotope times 10, right? So this is going to be yep. 25 times 10. And finally, for the next isotope, the third one, we have 26, the mass to charge ratio, and we have 12, which is your percent abundance. So 26 times 12, and we add up these three products together. We add them up. And then all of this is divided by the sum of the percent abundances, which in this case happens to be 100, right? So right. when we do this calculation, this gives us a value of 24.34 right and it asks us for the value at two decimal places and uh, in your periodic table uh, at least in the cambridge as chemistry paper uh, the magnesium has an air of 24.3 right uh, but you need this answer in two decimal places right so you will write this as 24.34 right and uh, this answer actually tells us that our working is correct because it's close to the value of AR in the periodic table, which yep. is 34.3. Yeah, right. they probably put like two decimal points to prevent, to prevent people from just copying from the exactly. table. Exactly, exactly. Uh, that's a perfect reasoning. And by the way, you may have noticed that uh, this past paper question was from paper four, right? Uh, and mm -hmm. the reason is, the reason this is from paper four is because um, it's a new topic in AS chemistry. Previously, this was in the A2 syllabus, right? So I had to pick out questions from paper four, which is the A2 theory paper, right? So that's why you'd see past paper questions from paper four. Right, so now we have the compound F, right? And uh, I'm going to skip this statement and the main important point of this is it contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only. So nothing else apart from these. Right. The mass spectrum shows that the mass to charge value or the M by E value for the M peak is 90. Right. So in other words, this is our MR. This is the MR of the compound F because the M peak is basically derived from the molecule getting A plus one charge, right? Mm -hmm. The ratio of the heights of the M peak at the M plus one peak, this ratio is 22.1 ratio, 0 0.7. So use the ratio of the heights of the M and M plus one peaks to calculate the number of carbon atoms of the molecule of F. So remember the formula, N equals 100 over 1.1 times, this is going to be the height of the M plus one peak, divided by the height of the M peak, right? This is another way of writing that formula. So the height of the M plus one peak from this ratio over here, is going to be 0 0.7. So I'm going to plug in 0 0.7 over here. And the height of the M peak is 22.1 from the ratio given. So I'm going to plug in 22.1 over here. So if I do this calculation, it gives me a value of 2.9 which is, you round it up to three because you cannot have 2.9 carbon atoms, right? Yeah. It's obvious. So you could have number of carbon atoms, which is three. So suggest the molecular formula of F. Now, uh, obviously the molecular formula, you're going to write C3, but yeah. what of the hydrogen and oxygen? 
<coughs> what you're going to do is you're going to use this uh, m by e value of the m peak, which is 90, right? What you're going to do is from 90, you subtract the mass of the three carbon atoms. And remember, because this is the m peak, you're going to assume that all carbon atoms are of the carbon 12 isotope, right? right. So, from so this you subtract, subtract 36. Right. You yeah. subtract three times 12, which is 36. And uh, this is going to give us 54, right? Now, this 54 is the mass of the hydrogen add oxygen part of the molecule, right? Now we need to decide how many hydrogens or oxygens there can be, right? Now, remember, um, if you have a saturated molecule, right? That basically means uh, all bonds with carbon atoms are single bonds, right? Mm -hmm. There are no double bonds involving carbon. So, You've studied the general formula of alkanes, which is CnH2n plus 2, right? Yep. So uh, for a saturated uh, hydrocarbon, or even if you have oxygen atoms, you can have oxygen atoms in this as well. They can come between the carbon and the hydrogen, right? So the maximum number of hydrogen atoms that is possible in this molecule can be uh, obtained from the general formula of the saturated hydrocarbon, which is the alkane. So if we have three carbon atoms, if you plug in three over here, this is going to give us 2n plus 2, which is going to be 8, right? So the maximum yep. number of hydrogen atoms you can have is 8, but you can have less than this, right? I mean, mm -hmm. in, in nowhere does it say that compound F is saturated, right? It can be unsaturated. So what do we do? What we're going to do is we're going to subtract oxygen atoms masses one by one from 54 until we get a number that can give us the mass of eight hydrogen atoms or less, right? So 54 over here, I'm going to go for the case of one oxygen atom. This is going to be 54 minus 16. And uh, this is going to give me 38. So 38 obviously is... Uh, a lot more than just eight hydrogen atoms. So I'm going to subtract one more oxygen atom. So this is going to be two oxygens. From 38, I subtract 16, the mass of one other oxygen atom. It's going to give me 22. Again, too much hydrogen. I'm going to go for three oxygen atoms. This is going to be 22 minus 16. This gives us six. Now you have six hydrogen atoms which is less than the maximum that you can have of eight, right? So we're going to say that this compound F has six hydrogens and three oxygens. So you have to rub these scenarios in your head, you know, just to make sure that the number of hydrogen atoms does not go overboard, right? Yep. So C38603 is our compound F. Right, next question. The mass spectrum of a halogen to alkane containing one chlorine atom or bromine atom will show an additional peak of M plus two. State the isotopes of chlorine and bromine responsible for M plus two peaks. So for, obviously for chlorine, this is going to be the heavier isotope, which is chlorine 37. And for bromine, it's going to be bromine 81, right? The two heavier isotopes of chlorine or bromine will result in the uh, mass to charge ratio of the molecular ion peak increasing by two units. Part two. Says, how do we know like um, hmm. the? How do we know the isotopes of um, chlorine or bromine? Okay, well, the unfortunate truth is you have to memorize these, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to. There are two isotopes of chlorine and bromine, right? Chlorine thirty five and thirty seven. Bromine seventy nine and. 81. That's it. But you have to remember these, right? And right, that's fine. you should also remember the uh, relative abundancies of these two isotopes, right? So for chlorine 35, that was 75%. For chlorine 37, it's 25%. For the two bromine isotopes, about 50%, right? So unfortunate reality, but you have to remember these things, right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, that's the nature of chemistry, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, let's go on to part two. The mass spectrum of uh, bromochloromethane 
CH2BrCl over here has a molecular ion peak M at an M by E value or mass to charge value of 128. It also has M plus two and M plus four peaks suggest the identity of the molecular ions that give rise to these peaks, right? So the M peak will be CH2. Now the BR will be the lighter isotope. So th that will be BR79. And we have chlorine, which is chlorine 35, right? This is one way of writing it. I've showed the carbon chloride and carbon bromine bonds, but I could also write this as CH2 BrCl, right? But um, I have to write their mass numbers or mass to charge values of the two isotopes in the, um, in the superscript on the left of the symbol. So for bromine, it's going to be 79 over here. For chloride, it's going to be 35, right? This is for the M peak. For M plus two peak, uh, actually I'm going to get to this later, M plus four, is going to be the two heavier isotopes. So this is going to be CH2BrCl. So Br is going to be 81, Cl is going to be 37, the two heavier isotopes, right? So chlorine, its mass went up two units from 35 to 37, so that's plus two. Bromine went up from 79 to 81, so that's plus two again. So two plus two gives us plus four, and plus four peak, right? For N plus two, there are two options, right? You could have either the lighter isotope of bromine, which is 79, and the heavier isotope of chlorine, which is 37, or you could have CH2, BrCl, where Br is of the heavier isotope and Cl is of the lighter isotope. So 79, 37, or 81, 35 right? One of them needs to be of the lighter isotope and the other needs to be of the heavier isotope of its respective element. And by the way, it says molecular ions. So just to be absolutely sure that you've nailed this question, mm -hmm. right? Square brackets around the molecular ion and have a plus charge at the superscript on the right. So over here, square brackets, positive charge, because all molecular ions or fragments or atoms are converted into plus one ions in a mass right. spectrometer. Next. Okay. Chlorine exists naturally as a mixture of two isotopes, 35 and 37, in the abundance ratio of three ratio one. The mass spectrum of chlorine consists of five peaks. Suggest the mass numbers for these five peaks and the identities of the species responsible. Now, chlorine, remember, is diatomic. It's a diatomic molecule. It's a halogen. So it's going to be Cl2, right? Now, now these Cl2s can be different, right? I'm going to write them down over here. I have three possibilities. Both chlorine atoms in the Cl2 molecule can be 35. Both of them can be 37 or one of them can be 35 and the other can be 37. And obviously we're going to have a plus charge around the square brackets and that will give us the molecular ions, right? The yep. mass number will basically be the sum of the uh, mass numbers of the atoms involved. So this is 35 plus 35, this is 70. This is going to be 72, this is going to be 74. Now the other two lighter species that are possible is if we have the chlorine molecule, it breaks up into fragments. You have yep. a chlorine atom that is individual. And this chlorine atom could be either 35, the plus sign, or 37 with the plus sign, right? And so the mass numbers will be 35 and 37. And that will give you the entire mass spectrum of a sample of chlorine. Now it says predict the ratios of the abundances of the three species with the highest mass numbers, right? Yep. Now for this, I want you to relate this to the concept that uh, 
uh, we studied regarding organic molecules containing two chlorine atoms, right? Mm -hmm. So two chlorine atoms, we know that we have three peaks. We have an M peak, we have M plus two, and we have M plus four, three molecular ion peaks. And when these three molecular ion peaks contain two chlorine atoms, their ratios, the height ratio of uh, these three peaks is going to be the same height ratio that you studied for two chlorine atoms in an organic molecule. You still have two chlorine atoms, but it's just that you don't have anything besides them, right? But the height ratio right. will be the same of N to N plus two to N plus four, which will be nine ratio six ratio one. So it's going to be nine ratio six ratio one. Right. So final question. And uh, this is about fragmentation, right? So this is the kind of question that you can expect. The mass spectrum of compound T contains several fragments. The N by E values of two of these fragments are 29 and 91. Draw the structures of the ions responsible for these peaks. Right. Now, uh, this fellow over here, now this is encountered in A2 and uh, um, AS students normally don't know what this is. This is a benzene ring and uh, its formula in this particular case is C6H5, right? And the rest is a skeletal formula that you guys already know about. Um, now 29 and 91, now I need to choose which side to begin from uh, to get that particular fragment. So for the lighter fragment, I'm going to start on this side, right? So this over here is CH3. This over here is CH2, right? So if I move along from this carbon atom, the first carbon atom is three hydrogens bonded to it. So this group has a mass of 15, right? So far so good, we can move along uh, to the left. CH2 has a mass of 14. So 15 plus 14 gives us 29. So we could stop over here and break this particular bond between this carbon and the nitrogen over here. So the structure of this ion is just going to be CH3, CH2, and this whole thing is surrounded by square brackets with a positive charge in the superscript. This is 29. Now for the mass to charge or M by E value of 91, I want to start from the heavier side, right? which basically contains the benzene ring, C6H5. So the mass of C6H5, if I were to calculate this, is, this is six times 12 plus five, this is 77, right? 77, still a ways from 91, so we can move on to the next part of the skeletal formula. This over here is CH2. And we know that CH2 has a mass of 14 units, so if I add 14 to the 77 from the benzene ring, it's going to give me 91. It's going to give me 91. So this over here, this particular carbon-carbon bond can be broken, and this is our fragment. I'm going to write this as C6H5. This is for the benzene ring, and then CH2, and that's it. Square brackets, positive charge. All right, so this is the kind of question that you could get regarding fragmentation. All right, so this was a, a deep look into mass spectrometry, the entire topic, right? And we looked at all these questions. So um, that is it regarding mass spectrometry. Um, if you have any questions, uh, don't forget to leave them in the comments, all right? That's all from my side, Ethan. Well, uh, thank you for hard for presenting this um, slide or this tutorial on our mass spectrometry. Um, although those in um, May June exams, it may have already ended, but I'm, I'm sure this would really help those doing the November winter examinations. Exactly, exactly. Yep. That that's that's what I had in mind uh, before yep. this session. Yes. All right, um, and I think this concludes this episode of ZN Live and
next episode will um is there anything that you want to go over next time we meet all right next time next time we will uh, look at uh, another topic a new topic that has been added to the as syllabus from a2 which is of ph curves so we will look at that in the next video yep and there you have it bye <laughs> all right take care bye